overseas Indians have achieved great success worldwide. And now they are turning their sights back toward their homeland. They return to India, start companies, and go on to create new successes. There is now a huge wave of people heading to India, and the movement to lure overseas Indians back is gathering strength as well. This effort is being led by successful overseas Indians who are working to make India a hub of entrepreneurship. Can we produce the next Google out of India? You know, why should it all to be over there? There are be hot spots. Shockwaves through India. Part three of our series will take a closer look at the power of overseas Indians who are starting to head for their homeland in huge numbers. So what does this network, which supports scores of Indian entrepreneurs, look like? It was started in the United States, home to the largest population of successful overseas Indians. Some estimates say that one out of every ten billionaires in the United States is Indian. This is the Indus Entrepreneurs Organization, or TIE for short. TIE was created by a group of successful Silicon Valley Indian businessmen. It is this organization's network that is fueling the current Indian entrepreneurship boom. Kanwal Reki, 62, one of the original founders of TIE, is a much sought after advisor. This legendary entrepreneur was the first to commercialize one of the most important internet protocols, TCPIP. He has accumulated personal wealth of some 50 billion yen. Reki and others like him share business knowledge and secrets to success with young would-be entrepreneurs hoping to set up companies back in India. Hi. The young man meeting with him today is trying to start a business providing information to users via cell phones. Hi, good morning, sir, once again. My uh, pleasure meeting you. In India. India. It's predominantly in India, but yeah, some in U.S., yeah. some in uh, UAE, some in Philippines. In the Indian, uh, Indian, yeah, telecom players have been, yeah, mobile players have been pretty, pretty harsh, pretty hard, yeah. Doesn't have the daily you know, utility. Reki draws on his wealth of experience to advise the young man who had fallen into a typical mindset of those just starting out. But there is going to be a 10 percent subset of that number. Uh, what we've done is, and how we are different from uh, the existing players in the marketplace is that we've developed a push-based uh, digital media content distribution platform. I'll tell you that up front right now because uh, the, not only business I gave you, but it's a very crowded market space. So push based, uh, yeah, we have yeah. not come across any. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we've looked at a couple of things in terms of the. Uh, the young man is convinced of the uniqueness of his idea. Reiki warns him that clinging to any one idea is a dangerous so, thing. For example, a person is interested in news. The ideas become obsolete very quickly. So the idea that you start with, yeah, it looks very attractive. Tomorrow something else happens in the marketplace. And this idea is absolute. Right. Uh, a good entrepreneur will change his plan very quickly. It's all about person. Ideas are 10 percent. Ideas are 10 percent. 90 percent is person. And so from that perspective, we felt that our uh, platform is... TIE, which supports young entrepreneurs with 49 offices in 11 countries, is considered by many to be the world's largest entrepreneur network. He's got content, but people are coming in sporadically. That's why he's able to only... So, so from the long haul... Right? As one who helped build TIE into the organization it is today, Ricky has personal experience that drove his desire to improve the status of overseas Indians in the business world. These days, Ricky lives in an exclusive residential area of Silicon Valley. 
one of the first IT pioneers. He has achieved great wealth since the 1980s. His success is remarkable even among other overseas Indians, but he says he owes it to the scientific and technical education he received in India. Born in northern India, Ricky studied electrical engineering at the Indian Institutes of Technology, many of whose graduates have gone on to achieve great success abroad. The IITs were created to educate the scientific and technological elite who would establish India as a powerful nation. Reggie says his IIT education taught him how to think logically and helped him become a more persuasive speaker. In 1967, he arrived in the United States with just $8 in his pocket. He began working as an engineer in a major electronic and communications firm. When Reiki graduated from IIT, India's economy was stagnant. At that time, 80% of its college graduates left India to find their fortunes on other shores. At the age of 35, Reiki moved into an office here on the outskirts of Silicon Valley and started his own company. But they were in the bat, you know, doing the designs and writing for drums. So, so we were behind the scenes and, you know, we were not happy being behind the scenes. So I thought, you know, it's time for us to make a move. To reach the top of the mountain, you, know, you have to be an entrepreneur. And, and there was no, no tradition of Indians doing it. So, th so there was a challenge of becoming the first one. At that time, the internet was only available to researchers. Reiki brought that technology to the average citizen. Here again, his solid technological education served him well. This is all new. He himself began trying to sell this brand new technology. Here too, his training and persuasion from his university days helped him. Microsoft was in the middle of its growth spurt and adopted Reiki's technology, whose sales figures amounted to a cool 5 billion yen a year. Five years after he created his business, Reiki was the first Indian to list his company on the New York Stock Exchange. It was at this time that his board members approached him with a most surprising demand. 